Joining us now from Whakatane is the region's mayor, Tony Bond. Tony, great to have you with us. What's the latest? What's uh, are the floodwaters going up, down? What's happening? They, they're not going down yet, John. It's actually still quite a serious situation. We've uh, stop banks on the Rangitaiki River are very fragile at the moment. So therefore, we are still getting people away from uh, the danger areas. The whole of Edgecombe, we have just about evacuated now. Uh, so the final few people have been asked to leave. And then we've got a few other uh, settlements along the river that um, if where they feel that the stop, stop banks are fragile, we're going to ask them to move out. And what, what settlements are they? Is that Thornton and Tateko? What are we talking about here? Yeah, it's Thornton. Okay. Uh, so which, we've got... Yeah, which is nearer the sea, right? So that would have been hit by the tide when it came in about 3 o'clock? Yeah, we've, we've, got, we've got the stop banks along that river that have been monitored all the time. We've, we've got a 300-year a event here, and um, it's... Is putting pressure on all of the uh, stop banks. Uh, so um, the danger breach, we've had an intentional breach south of the town to try and make sure that we can actually take the pressure off. So can you explain that to me? South of Edgecombe, did you have an intentional breach? What did you? How did you make that work? Well, there, there was a spillway there designed to take the pressure. It, it, when the river got up to a certain level, um, it wasn't going fast enough, so they've actually uh, made the breach bigger to take the pressure off where the water is going, pouring into Edgecombe. Wow, and you've basically evacuated everyone in the town now, have you? The, 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 basically the whole town is out. Yes, and um, it's been a very professional operation today, uh, managed by the police, and we had uh, local agricultural contractors with their vehicles, jet boats, and uh, a huge contingent of New Zealand Fire Service. So. Yeah, and, and volunteers were about to speak to one of them. W were you caught out by this? It happened very, very suddenly. It, was it much bigger than anyone thought it was going to be? Correct. This morning on Radio New Zealand, I actually told everybody that um, we were fairly secure. We think we've got through the worst of it. I went home for a cup of tea and some breakfast, and within minutes, the whole thing changed. And so when you said, and I actually heard you saying that, when you said that you felt reasonably relaxed, that's not quite the right word, but uh, where was that information coming from? It was coming from, um, we had our uh, emergency centre here open all night. The war, it was mainly the, the rain had stopped. And so we felt that the rain stopped. We got through uh, the 2.30 high tide. The next high tide wasn't until 3 p.m. And we thought, right, that's going to be the next pressure point at 3 p.m. It's a hell of a river, isn't it? Because it flows from up in the highlands. And the Matahina Dam is not far up. You go, you don't have to drive far to get to the dam from Edgecombe. What, was that used as effectively as it could have been as a form of flood control? We believe so, but the question will be asked as soon as this is all over. We want to make sure that things have been done correctly. And, of course, at any, in any disaster, you have people stating that. Other, other things, so determined to make sure that we get to the, the bottom of it and work with regional councils. So, so, sure so, so the, the bottom of what? What is the stuff that's troubling you at the moment? Oh, I'm not really troubled. I think it's, been, it's handled being very carefully. But um, there are some people saying that we could have held more water back or um, released water before the event. But this was being monitored right through. So I was very comfortable right up to all the time. And you got to remember, it wasn't the, the bank was breached. It wasn't actually overtopped. So the, the, basically the bank collapsed. How much damage is there, do you reckon? I mean, you've evacuated an entire town and the CBD, as we know, and it's a, it's a small little community, what permanent population of about 1,600 in, in, in the central part of Edgecombe Town itself. Uh, is water basically through just about every home and business there? Uh, the water's through about a good one third, if not nearly half of the town. And the other half is dry, but this is a that's where we've got to be very careful because if the bank is, um, doesn't hold, then they'll be in, in immediate right, danger. Right, right, right. This, this happened quickly. I know one policeman saw the bank was ready to go. He ran and warned people. But this gentleman got his first vehicle out. As he was driving down with his vehicle, he looked in the rear vision mirror and just saw the wall of water going towards his home. Yeah, it's and extraordinary. 
And then another one, a guy woke up this morning after a, a night shift and thought, hello, I think I've got water in my bedroom. And sure enough, his, his uh, phone was floating. So um, he was, he was pretty um, shocked and woke up quickly. And, and, and Edgecombe had big flooding in 2004. You built stop banks. Everyone knows how the flooding works. This is not a town that's going to be caught out by flooding unless it's exceptional. But I'm, I'm really interested in where the problematic water came from. Was it raining very heavily directly above Edgecombe or was it running down the river from the hills? It's, it's the bulk of this weather bomb, and it was a weather bomb, that has happened in the, in the hill country mainly. And that's where, we, you know, we've, right now we've got a rescue team going up to uh, between Mutapara and Ruatahuna because we have uh, identified about 30 people still trapped in vehicles on the, the road up to Ruatahuna. It's, there's been so many slips and this communication has been so hard. So it just shows you that it was a major weather bomb further up and it um, takes a little bit of time for water to come down. Mayor Tony Bond, thank you so much for joining us uh, with the latest. So evacuations still taking place and people now looking up the river into the hills for anyone who needs to be saved, removed from their property or just simply checked up on.